what is going on ladies and gentlemen my name is Sarah and I hope each and every one of you is having an absolutely fantastic day thank you so much for joining me for another video if you are new to the channel thanks for coming along and I hope you'll consider subscribing and if you've been here before well thanks for tuning in yet again I appreciate your continued support you guys are totally awesome so today's video is going to be a bit of a quick tip for you about how to hack Zwift and by hack Zwift I mean accessing any world on the platform whenever you want to access it now with two guest worlds on the platform which has hasn't always been the case. It's a little easier to ride when and where you want, but there's going to be times that you want to ride on a world that just isn't available. Let's say for instance, you wanted to do a PR attempt on Ventop and France isn't available for the day. You could wait until it's available or you can use this hack to be able to ride that world when you want to. Now this video is going to show you how to download and use an executable file that's provided by Zwift Hacks. And to be clear, I'm showing my face here on the internet. My channel has been around for a while and I have no reason to direct you to anything that's going to harm your computer. So you can rest assured that this isn't a virus or any type of worm that's going to damage your computer. And it's not something that's resource heavy or is going to take up a whole ton of space. It's a very small script program that works with the back end of Zwift to just override some of the preferences that are built right into the program so that the program itself doesn't have to handle those changes. The other thing to keep in mind is that this is only available for an actual computer. So you need to be running a Windows PC or Mac OS. This right now will not work in Android Android or iOS. I don't anticipate this working for either of those programs anytime soon. I personally have been using this program for close to six years now, and it has worked perfectly the entire time. But in that time, they have not made any type of development strides towards mobile. And because of the security implications in mobile, I find it very unlikely that this will be available. But if you are using a PC or a Mac, this might be of help for you. And hopefully at the end of this video, you'll decide if this program is right for you and you'll understand how to use it. Super simple, but I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So starting with the downloads here, you will navigate up to ZwiftHacks.com slash Zwift hyphen preferences. It'll bring you right to their download page with some screen grabs, some basic information, prerequisites, and of course, downloads for both Windows and Mac OS. Now, Zwift Hacks has been a community resource for a number of years, very highly trusted, much like Zwift Insider. They don't ask for your credit card details. They don't ask for any of your information. They are not a nefarious group of people. They are just a number of individuals who are passionate about Zwift that are trying to create value for the community. So Again, I would not lead you to any resource that would hurt your computer, but these folks can be trusted. And I recommend maybe you check out some of their other links as well as they can provide some very helpful information. I already have this downloaded, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it. It's right, right front row center here. And to be clear, when you use this program, you need to make sure that Zwift is not running. It's going to run a script to the program so that it will load these settings that you change at launch and it will not work live. So make sure that Zwift is not running when you run this script here. So it's going to take you to a page here and what you'll notice is that a lot of these settings are going to be things that are already in the settings screen of Zwift. It's just giving you a more comprehensive area to go ahead and change those settings. And then those settings will just be in place when you launch instead of navigating into the world itself and hitting the menu. That's one of the frustrating parts about the UI in Zwift is that you have to go into a ride to change the settings. So this just gives you an option outside of that construct. So starting from left to right, you'll be in the frequent tab here. And this is your trainer effect. This translates to trainer difficulty in the menu. And this just gives you a little bit more granular detail about where you are. You can't see the percentages on the Zwift menu screen, but you can actually navigate to exactly the percentage that you want. There are a few presets down here, but you could go ahead and put that exactly where you want to. You can turn on or off the Neo Road Feel if you have a tax Neo trainer. And then this is the money shot here. This is the world selection. And it'll show you what your guest world is on the calendar, gives you a little bit of a resource to read here as well. But the only thing that you can override is the base world. You can't actually override the guest world that is driven online through Zwift. You have to override the base of the program, which is Watopia. So you'd be exchanging that out for whatever world that you want to ride. So if I wanted to ride Yorkshire, I'd go ahead and select that. Going through the next portion of this page here, you can change your sport from cycling to running and hack the running as well. And then you can actually hide the course selector. And this just shows the courses that are already selected. Usually these will include the last course that you rode on that world, but you can actually change that. So that way you don't have to go into the menu at all. So if I want to go into Yorkshire and I want to ride uh, the Queen's Highway, when I open Zwift, that one will be selected if I choose it here in the program. 
Going over to sound and screen, you can actually customize your window width and your window height. So if you run in windowed mode like I do to run with other programs, you can actually dial that in yourself so that it opens properly each and every time. You can change it to full screen mode. You can change to minimal UI that will take out a lot of the excess data that you might not want on the screen. You can reduce the leaderboards. Here you can change your resolution. You can change your volume, sound effects, your announcer volume in case they do some type of live event with an announcer. You can use some of these presets down here. You can play the title music. Please don't play the title music. It'll hurt your feelings. It certainly hurts mine. Uh, your, your preferred monitor will be located here. You can go into the miscellaneous tab. It'll show your workouts with erg mode. Edit and watts, that is for your workout creator. Allowed blurred vision, that is kind of that blurry uh, nonsense right before the arch that a lot of people think is a failed graphics card, but you can turn that on here. Power smoothing is available. And then your miscellaneous, your profanity filter, ignore God messages, those are uh, top-down messages from the program. Uh, enable distance markers, uh, drops verbose log, and prefer native BLE. These are really some back-end details that you don't really need to worry a whole lot with. And then your steering sensitivity, you can go ahead and adjust here instead of doing so in the menu. I leave it right down the center for my device. And then this will just kind of show some of the devices that you have uh, known by the program your trainer, you can unpair some of this stuff if you have some issues. Most of these items won't be of major utility for you, but just going through all of the screens here, it'll show you what is available in case you want to really deep dive into the program. Here's a link to the Zwift Insider page. Those two sites work hand in hand and in tandem to support the community. So again, just a very highly reputable source to use. And then what you'll do, as soon as you're done making all of your changes, we'll hit submit. So remember here, I chose York Yorkshire and I asked it to automatically open the Queen's Highway. So we'll submit it here and then we'll open up Zwift and you'll be able to see that the script worked as I indicated in the app itself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip the pairing screen just so we can see the, the money shot here. But you can see that my primary world is selected here as Yorkshire and not Watopia. And if I open this, here's Queen's Highway. So I made that change. So this will automatically open as soon as I select the main world and I can go ahead and open up my ride and everything is as I indicated. And then just for reference, I didn't change any of the settings in this case, but you can kind of see that all of my settings remained congruent with what was in the Zwift Preferences application. Music, volume off, game resolution at 4K, windowed mode, power smoothing on, and so on and so forth. So again, you can change those. You can see that you have to get into the world itself to make those changes in the menu. So maybe that Zwift Preferences app might help you to get dialed in so you can just kind of get on your bike and start and don't have to fumble around in the menu itself. But that's about it, you guys. It's pretty simple to use. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I did want to give you a cursory overview of how the executable works. Hopefully you guys will find it useful and download it. Again, I linked it down below. If you did find this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. It really does help the channel out quite a bit. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.